Happy Downtowner here. I'm out and about on my quest for scrumptious pastry. Today we're at Baker on the Square in Milan, Ohio. Founder Richard Schaefer shares his story. I am Richard Schaefer and I am the Baker on the Square here in Milan, Ohio. These are our Italian cream rolls, soft yeast roll and I mix a little bit of olive oil and honey into the dough. After they're baked up, we slice them and add a whipped vanilla cream. They're very good. A little dusting of powdered sugar and, uh, and they're great. This is a pretty special little spot for my little The whole decor, everything. I don't know, it reminds me like you're stepping into a little New York bistro. Yeah. The, the decor and the tin ceilings and the color. What I really liked was, I love sweets, don't get me wrong, but when I saw that they had sausage gravy and fresh homemade biscuits, it was out of this world. So that's why we said once a week, we gotta come now. Our specialties are pastries, cakes, breads, cookies. I do have a gentleman who comes in a couple days a week and helps out. I'm here about 4 a.m. to get things going. And by clothing time, we're usually pretty much out of everything. So I grew up baking. My grandma was always in the kitchen. My dad was always in the kitchen. So my wife and I own the building. And at this point in our lives, it's like, you know, let's let's go ahead and try it and see how it works out. So I am from Milan, Milan born and bred. I was 10 years old cleaning tables in here, and now I'm well into my 50s cleaning tables again. So good. Cranberry, oatmeal, oatmeal, white chocolate chip. The best cookie in my life. Yummy. Just down the way is the legendary Wonder Bar and Grill. It's also a great place to visit during the Milan Melon Festival. In 1817, on the site of an abandoned Moravian Indian mission village named Pei Cutting, Milan Village was platted by Ebenezer Mary. It was incorporated as Milan in 1833 and named after Milan, Italy. On the next corner is the Milan Wine Post a wine shop and bar with unique wines and beers and a relaxed atmosphere. Speaking of Italian influences, folks come from miles around for the pizza from Jim's Pizza Box, founded by Jim West. I am Jim from Jim's Pizza Box. I started in 1978 and my kids are taking off. My name is Bill and I come here to Jim's Pizza Box. This is the best place to gather one for good food and two for our good friends. You order off the either pick two or pick three list because that's the best deal in the place. He makes some of the best chili around. It is absolutely delicious. Well, pizza is what we're known for. It's done our pastas. Everything we've done here is based off my mom's recipes. We're at Vermillion here in Milan, Ohio, home of Thomas Edison. This historic village is not only home to the birthplace of Thomas Edison, but also to the Invention Restaurant, home of hearty meals, and all things Thomas. People from all over the world have visited this charming eatery. Monuments on the square commemorate those who served from Milan, Ohio in various wars. Next stop, the coffee station. Owner Stacy Rear spills the beans. My name is Stacy, and I'm the owner of the coffee station in Milan, Ohio, birthplace of Thomas Edison. We have our own special blend of coffees, the Thomas Edison signature blend. I'm holding my famous Snoogle. It has cream cheese in the center and glazed outside, and they're wonderful. They go great with coffees. In the same block is Milan Antiques, owned by Tom and Nancy Fell. It's a historic inn with an antiques and collectible store. We're here at the Milan Public Library. Hello, my name's James, I'm the director here. So it is a Carnegie Library. It's been here since 1912. 
If you haven't been to a library in a while, we have a lot of interesting things just beyond the books and movies and children's programs that you typically think of when you think of the library. This statue of Thomas Edison holding his inventions, a light bulb and a phonograph, was made by Ohio sculptor Alan Cottrell. Milan Township Hall was rebuilt with its iconic clock tower after a 1988 fire. The original bell is now displayed next to the hall. Down the square is the Kelly Block, rebuilt by E.B. Kelly in 1900. He and his wife kept a saloon on the lower floor and rented the upstairs to railroad workers. A few streets away, the Milan Museum offers historic buildings with galleries and exhibits that showcase examples of early American folk and decorative arts. In the same area, an authentic blacksmith shop and a building housing equipment used in everyday service depict life in a simpler time. The general store also serves as a gift shop with old-fashioned photos and memorabilia. My good friend, Les the Librarian, shares details about Milan's favorite native son and world-renowned inventor, Thomas Edison. Born on February 11, 1847, to Samuel and Nancy Elliott Edison. His humble beginnings started in this brick home built by his father along the Milan Canal. He was the youngest of seven children and lived here until the age of seven when his parents relocated to Port Huron, Michigan. Thomas Edison is known for his work on the incandescent light bulb and the invention of the phonograph. However, he's credited also with inventing the electric fan, the electric coffee pot, and the mimeograph machine, as well as a talking doll. Edison posthumously received two Grammy Awards, the first in 1977 as the winner of the Trustee Award, and again in 2010 when he received a Technical Grammy for Outstanding Technical Significance to the Recording Field. The image of Edison on this bench represents his last visit to his birthplace on August 11, 1923. In 1839, the Milan Canal was completed. It flowed into the Huron River, enabling Milan to become the second largest grain exporter in the world and a shipbuilding center from 1840 to 1867. Years ago, the design of the J.C. Lockwood House provided me with artistic inspiration. The home at number 30 Edison Drive was built in 1847 in the federal style and was Victorianized in 1870. The owner was a thriving merchant and shipbuilder. At one time, the immortal Joe DiMaggio slept there. The home is on the National Register of Historic Places. The street was originally known as the Hogback an Indian trail leading north to Lake Erie. There's so much more to explore about Milan, Ohio. We're happy to share just some of the highlights. Debbie Downtowner, see you next time.